just want to thank you for coming and joining today. Um, we are here. Welcome to Northern Jesus Name Ministries. Uh, I'm just so delighted that you would take your time to join us and be on this live stream with us this morning, on this Sunday morning, this glorious day that the Lord hath made. Amen. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I just praise his name today. And I just want to be able to bring to you a blessing. And hopefully, Lord, will open your hearts and your minds to truth. Amen. So that we can make it to heaven together. Amen. All right. Um, let's just go before the Lord in prayer this morning. And just, God, we just pray and ask you this morning that you would move in such a mighty way, God, that you would open our eyes, God. Lord Jesus, as, as the Apostle Paul, God, the scales, as it were, fell from his eyes that he seen you. And God, help us see you today, God, not man, but you, Lord. You have come to bring your spirit, God, that would dwell in us, God, that you said would lead and guide us into all truth and would bring to our remembrance whatsoever you have said. And God, we want nothing less than what you've promised us today, God. And God, we just pray, God, that you would help us to have the courage, amen, the, the hope, the faith to reach out and receive that promise, that rest with wherewith ye said ye would cause the weary to rest. Lord, you said your burden is light and your yoke is easy, O God. Lord, it's not the burden of man. It's not as the old law, God, the cumbersome God, the weights, God, that were there. And Lord, we, we, we actually uh, kind of parallel with Paul, God, the weights, and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience that race that is set before us, God. The author and the finish of our faith, God, you are in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. And I hope you're doing well today. I hope that your family is doing good. And uh, we, we're just praying that this ministry, that, that God would reach your hearts. Amen. We're not asking you to follow us. We're asking you to follow Jesus. This is what we want. I'm not a pastor. You have no desire to be a pastor as the world calls calls pastors pastor. I'm a brother in the Lord. I'm a fellow servant in Christ. Amen. And and we're here to, to bring a word of the Lord to you. Amen. God has laid on my heart. Amen. The things that, that he asked me to put out. Amen. And, and, and I just want to pronounce and proclaim uh, to, to the brethren and, and by means to preach the truth. Amen. He, he said the watchman in Ezekiel 33, 6 and 7, he said, if we don't warn, if God shows you something and you, you don't speak out about it, and, and that, that applies to the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. That gospel of peace, praise God. Amen. You are commissioned, amen, in, in Matthew 28 and 19, go ye into all the world. Amen. What's the world? Now, now you know, many, many think that that's just missionary work or, or people, but that's not. That's in your world. Amen. You can can only do with what you have to do with. Amen. If you're, if you're not a billionaire or whatever and you can't reach other countries, that's not for you. And, 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 and just to tell you that, you know, um, I, I've not told anyone not to go to church. Amen. As, as man, man made churches today, you, you have to listen to the Holy Ghost for your situation and your salvation. I'm, I'm teaching truth here this morning. I'm bringing out why you uh, don't have to go to church. Amen. That that should not be your stay of salvation. I, I'm not telling you not to go. I'm telling you the reason you go should be different. Amen. Uh, my family's in church this morning, praise God, but but they know their salvation does not depend on being there. Amen. They're, they're, they're no, they know that they are going to, that when the time is and now will come. Amen. He said, the true worshipers shall worship 
the Father in spirit and in truth. Amen. It doesn't matter whether you go to the well. It doesn't matter if you're at Jacob's well. Amen. He said, whether it's the mountain or wherever, it doesn't matter. A place is not important today. It's your heart. Amen. He said he'd write the laws and the letter in your heart and in our minds, praise God. That's, we are the temple, amen, of God, amen. He He no longer wants to dwell in any, any uh, buildings or tabernacles or tents, amen. He is not content with that, and neither should we be, praise God. I, I'm not against anyone giving uh, as God leads their heart to give. Amen. They must give and, and do it cheerfully. But but I tell you that the a percent called tithes that is being preached from man wrongly today, it's unbiblical. Amen. The new covenant church of God is false. That 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 teaching is wrong. Amen. It's it's for man's gain, and they, and they have manipulated, and that's what we're going to talk about here this morning. Amen. Praise God. We're, we're going to talk about uh, the skill of manipulation of truth. Amen. See, this, this, is, a, this is a thing here that, that we must understand. We, we must rightly divide the word of truth, a, a, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, the Bible says in, in, in 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Amen. Rightly dividing the word of truth. You see, it's it's meant for those that God has called. Amen. And, and we have to watch out for deceivers. Amen. And they're all over the place. And where do you think that, that Satan would much rather be than to deceive the elect of God, those who God has elected to come to heaven. Praise God. Those that he has called. That's where the demonic, that's where the the, the deception, that's where the demons and the devil would like to reside. They want to move in and deceive you from making it to heaven. Amen. That's where they're going to be in, in force. Praise God. And we have to be wise to that. Amen. There, there is so many warnings, praise God, in the Bible telling us about the deception of man. And we've got to be very conscious of that. Amen. Amen. It is very important today that we rightly divide the word of truth, praise God. And he said, if, if by some means that, that I can reach you, the apostle said, and I, and I want to just just talk about a couple things here. I want to uh, go to, and and we're. Uh, I hope you can see this on on the screen there. Uh, deception, amen. Deception. So, Jesus said, "These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be filled." Now, let me tell you what, what Jesus was talking about here. He said that my joy might remain in you. Why would he say that? You see, because he's seen a point. He's seen a day when you will come to him. Amen. He's seen a day when you came, you repented and was baptized in his wonderful name and that burial, amen, and his resurrection and you came up in newness of life and the Holy Ghost came upon you and you began to speak with other tongues and you felt the power of God from the top of your head to the toes of your feet, amen. You felt that Shekinah glory, amen. You felt the mighty power of God washing your soul, washing your sins away, praise God. And you were filled with that power, amen, that Acts talks about in 1 and 8, amen. And ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. He knew there was a day that when you would feel that, you would feel that joy unspeakable and full of glory, amen. He said your bellies would flow with rivers of living water, amen. Woo, amen, praise God. I, I'm feeling him right now and I hope you are too, praise God, by way of remembrance. Remembrance, amen. Let us let us remember that day, amen. Let us remember those times, praise God. Amen, amen, amen. But he knew that you would need to keep it there. And he said that your joy might remain in you. Because he knew that that spirit 
and that, that insatiable appetite of man to be pleased and to have authority and to rule and to deceive was prevalent, amen. Even in that day, the apostles talks, some of them came out from among us, they said, who have deceived many, amen. And, and Demas who hath forsaken, amen, me loving this present world, amen. Praise God, we know that man can and will deceive. The Bible said the heart is desperately wicked and who can know it? We know God knows it, amen. And, and Jesus, one of the 12, <laughs> he said, was a devil. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was Judas that was set out to betray him, amen. We have got to get the concept here, my friend. We have got to understand the importance of man in his deception, amen, of giving himself over to that demonic spirit to move us away from God, move us away from Jesus Christ, the one died for us, bled for us on the cross, praise God. We have got to be aware we're not ignorant of his devices, amen, the Bible says. We are not ignorant of the devil's devices. Resist the devil. Submit yourself to God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. Give no place to the devil. Amen. And that spirit by which he manifests himself into man. Amen. And, and it plays on the greed that is in man. Amen. And the authority and power that they wish to have over their brethren. Praise God. And yes, I said brethren because we're not talking about the world, my friend. These letters are from, from God to the saint. Amen. To those that have fallen away even. Amen. He talks about the devil. Amen. Fallen away. The angels who left their first estate. Praise God. We have got to understand that these, these words of God are to those that he is called. Amen. It's not to the heathen. It's not to them. We, we like to conjecture, amen. And that's, that's one of the words we're going to be talking about today. We like to move it to other people. And we like to extend it and extrapolate things out to mean other things and to other people. But my friend, these words are the words of life to the called. Praise God, praise God. And I want you to know this morning that we have got to be so very careful Amen. Praise God. We have got to be very careful today. And I want to I want to go over here to the the word conjecture and and, and and the meaning of it. Conjecture. An opinion or conclusion formed on the basis of incomplete information. Amen. And, and, and we, we've, we've got a lot of things going on today. We're going to point out some, some common and, 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 and very familiar scriptures and, and, and preaching that, that, that happens all the time in the congregations of man-made churches today. We're going to point those things out. We're going to, we're going to let you know, amen, what those are and where they go off track, amen. So when I look at those things, praise God. And let me let me grab something here. I, I think I emailed something to myself, and I think I have it here. We'll see if it came over here. I believe so. And let me grab this here. You know. See if I can't pull it over here real quick. And I apologize for this not having it already. Uh, all right, let me just uh, copy this. And I'm just going to paste this here. All right, I believe you can see this here now. Um, but anyhow, what I'm showing you here, this this is a circle to the left, and and we have a blown up view to the right. Um, and 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 what I want to talk about here is the the other word here, and it it's called extrapolation. 
And, and let me explain this, extend the application of a method or conclusion, especially one based on statistics, to an unknown situation by assuming that existing trends will continue or similar methods will be applicable. Now, let me, I've had, had some uh, experience in, in geometry, uh, I was a designer, uh, CAD systems and stuff. And, and so one of the things that, that when we would go to put geometric shapes together to, to create parts and prints, um, is there was a function called extrapolate. And, and we could literally, and what you're seeing here on that small circle to the left, is where I have cut that circle. Uh, I've cut a segment uh, and you see the dividing line to the left and a dividing line to the right. Well, this is the way you would do it in the CAD system, the, the computer-aided design system. And you would cut that. Now, well, we know that the circle is arcs. And, and, and so when you cut that, the, the, the computer knows that by definition, those segments, and, and if, you, if you know geometry, even an arc is, is a series of lines point to point. Amen. They're just smaller and manipulated into an arc of circle. So the definition is a circle. However, if you cut that, and if you was to blow it up real big, you would see what what we got. We have a bunch of segments, line segments, and 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 they know theirself. These entities, as as the computer uh, knows it, as a circle. But what happens when you when you uh, cut that? You divide that. Amen. And we're, we're talking about rightly dividing the word of truth here. So I'm not going off of what we're talking about. But when you do divide that, and when you look at the, the larger scale to the right, that, that bigger diameter, and you see the cut marks, and you see where I have selected that line, and I said extrapolate. Well, the computer is just going to start moving that out based on the information that it saw. Now, what happens is, is that we know that these points, these this arc is co uh, comprised of line segments. So at some point when it gets cut, it no longer has that full definition of a circle. So I hope that I can explain this to you as far as extrapolation, how that when you take this and you say to that computer, extrapolate it, it's only going to use the known information that it has. And maybe this consists of only three small little lines, and it's it's going to uh, divide by the means of where that is, and it's going to start extending, amen, that, that segment, that line. And you'll see what happens here as I extend that. It goes out of the circle because it has forgotten that it is part of a circle. And, and that's some of the things that I'm wanting to tell you this morning. I'm trying to explain to you the word of God and how manipulation happens and how the devil from the garden, when he told Eve, thou shalt surely not die if you eat the apple. Because if you eat the apple, God knows that you'll be a God as he is. And then he, he doesn't want that. He, he's, he's, he's being mean and cruel to you. He's hiding. He's not allowing you to have more than what you what what he wants you to have and and you're limited by God and that's the that's the lie that he brought and 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 this spirit the same spirit has has encompassed organizations and 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 man's religion amen so I, I just want you to understand how that that function can actually work there so when you have conjecture and that's exactly why you have so many different religions today and so many different things that is off of the real path of the truth so we have to have faith and faith in jesus we have to have faith and trust in Jesus because he knows the beginning and the end. He, he, he's not just limited by this small piece of information. That is why, my friend, it is so, so important that you receive God's spirit because, you know, the letter the Bible says killeth, but the spirit giveth life. What do you think that he means by that? The spirit is something that's alive in you. It will, it will, it will adjust for every situation situation you currently go through and those things that they're coming at you it will adjust for that but the letter of the law is is stamped 
in time. It is stamped by that circumstance. When we read the word of God, it's about Peter. And I'm telling you that the Bible, the word of God comes alive through the spirit of Jesus. I'm not telling you the word is stale. I'm just telling you, you can't live by the letter. You have to live by the Holy Ghost. He will bring to your remembrance all things whatsoever he has said unto you. Amen. He will lead and guide you. The Holy Ghost is your teacher. Amen. He he is alive forevermore, he said, and he has both hell, death, and the grave. Amen. He has conquered those things. Amen. And he wants to be a live thing. Amen. He he said, You are a lively generation. Amen. You are you are a lively people, amen. Not something that's dead. Amen. And when you go to man, he's just he's just bringing things to, to what he knows. But you have got to tap in to the Holy Ghost. Amen. You got to allow the Holy Ghost to lead you. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise God. And I, I hope somebody's getting this this morning. I hope you're understanding. Praise God. What, what we're talking about here this morning. Praise God. Because it's something that is going to keep you. His word, his spirit will lead and guide you into all truth. Praise God. And I want to, I want to bring forth a couple scriptures here. The Bible said Romans 1 and 20. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator? Amen. I'm telling you, you don't go back to man when Jesus pulled you away from the old law, my friend. And, and you can go back to some of our other videos. I'm, I'm not going to go through the whole thing today. Uh, but, but you can go back and you can understand that we have passed, amen, from, from death to life, praise God. The letter killeth, my friend. He, those even that were under the law that did the best they could that followed the Spirit of God could not be made perfect until after Jesus came and the Holy Ghost came. They were made perfect in us, praise God. That's in your Bible. That's in Hebrews 11, 39 and 40, praise God. Read it, praise God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee, O God. Amen, David said. Praise God, praise God. Amen, the deception amen, is out there. And, and when you look, I'm, I'm telling you what Matthew 24 and 4, when the disciples said, Lord, tell us when shall these things be? When shall the end come? And what is the sign of the end times, O God? What is it? What tell, tell us, Lord, let us know. Amen. And Jesus, the first thing he came out with, he did not say wars and rumors of wars, my friend. Amen. He said, take heed that no man deceive you. That is very sobering. Take heed that no man deceive you. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3. Let no man deceive you. Galatians 6 and 7. Be not deceived whatsoever a man. You understand, you follow here. The deceived and man is, is, is in the same sentence so many times in the scripture. Amen. 1 Corinthians 3 and 18. Let no man deceive himself. Amen. Ephesians 5 and 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Amen. Amen. 2 Timothy 3 and 13. But evil men and seducers. Come on now. Amen. Man, is this this clicking yet? Is this clicking for you? Praise God. I'm telling you, my friend, these are real scriptures. This is a real subject, my friend. This, you know, many people want to say, oh, well, you're judging people. You're judging people. I am not judging people. This is the word of God. And this is what we're to br bring forth. Amen. This is what we're to share. Praise God. This is the word. All the apostles knew that the deception of man, even Paul said, if we or any angel or if any other even if we preach something different than that which has been preached to the gospel of Jesus Christ, let him be accursed. Take those words to the bank, my friend. Take those words to the bank. He said, even if we come back and say something different, if we're not jiving with Jesus, don't listen to us. And I'm going to tell you today, we, we, we have full doctrines that, that have even used the apostles' words Amen. To, to, to leave the faith. They have left what Jesus taught. They have left the spirit by which Jesus taught. Amen. 
Praise God. And we'll, we'll, we might get into some of that here. Amen. I want to go to 2 Peter. We're going to go to 2 Peter 2. Two and eighteen, praise God. All right, Second Peter two and eighteen. He said, While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruptions, for of whom a man is overcome. Of the same as he brought into bondage, praise God. Amen. And he said there, there, there are wells without water, clouds that, that are carried with a tempest to whom the mist of darkness is, is reserved. Amen. Praise God. Forever, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. And I want to tell you, while they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. Amen. I'll tell you right now, my friend, this, this is talking just like he, he is he's leveling this field. Amen. He's showing that, that we are seeing in this day, in these last days, praise God, that we're seeing it in the, in the, in the synagogues, the churches today, that man has moved things to himself, to his own benefit, praise God. These are murmurers walking after their own lust, Jude 1 and 16 says. Second Peter 3 and 5 says, having a form of godliness, amen, but denying the power of their own. You know what power they're denying? They are not leading you to be led of the Holy Ghost. They are bringing you back into bondage, amen. That is where they're bringing you because they do not benefit, amen. Second Peter, amen, praise God, 2 and 18, we just read, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error, amen. Praise God, we, we have got to be awake, and, and there's a whole lot of stuff telling us to awake, amen, to righteousness, praise God, to be ever mindful, praise God. Amen. He, he said, Jesus said that your joy might be full in him and that it might remain. How is our joy pulled away but then to walk after man after we have come to know Jesus Christ in the fullness of his spirit, praise God, being led by him, through him, praise God. And, 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 and I want to tell you, amen, David he, in 2 Samuel 24 and 14, amen, David chose not to be judged by man. He said, I'll take God any day. Amen. He said, I'll take God and his mercy any day. He knew what man was capable of. He knew what the heart of man would, would, would lead to, praise God. He knew that man would be selfish. He knew man would seek his own, praise God. But he knew the mercies of God were forevermore. Amen. He knew those mercies, praise God. And I'm telling you today, choose Jesus. Choose the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. To reside in you, praise God. To, to deliver you, amen. And keep you free, praise God. Amen. It's, it's not walking back to man after you've met Jesus. It's not coming under obedience to a man. I said that priesthood is done away with. That priesthood is gone, praise God. And I'm so thankful, and you should be so thankful too, that we don't have to go back to man, praise God. Hebrews 10 and 28 said, Moses by two or three witnesses, praise God. Those things were established, praise God. Hebrews 2 and 18 said, by two immutable facts, amen. Talking about how that, uh, 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 concurrence, amen. We talk about conjecture and extrapolation. Man wants to, to change the truth of God into a lie and, and love and serve the creature more than the creator, amen. But I'm telling you this morning, praise God, we've got to stay with Jesus, 
We've got to stay with the spirit by which he taught. Amen. That gospel will not change, praise God. And I don't care about the apostles said themselves that oh, we or any angel, amen, or any other would preach any other gospel than that which we have preached. And if they go off of the name of Jesus, if they go off of the spirit by which he had preached and commanded them, amen, then we cannot listen to them anymore. Amen. We have rightly got to divide the word of truth, praise God. We have to watch for the skillful manipulation of the truth, amen. Satan is a deceiver. He's a liar and the father of all lies, praise God. Amen. And we have got to be ever mindful, praise God. Amen, amen, amen. And I want to, I want to go to Revelation 20 and 10. Amen. And, 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 and you think, When we go to Revelation 20 and 10, and you can see it here, and the devil that deceived them, amen, talking about when, when God had thrown them out, amen, and the fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And it says, and the devil that deceived them, this is the people that were caught up in the lie of Satan, amen, and that spirit of deception, amen. It said, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever, amen, amen, amen. Do you, do you, my friend, do you want to be? tormented day and night forever and ever. These are warnings, my friend. These God has given us, amen, these things beforehand so that we will know, amen, when, when, when we look, praise God, and, and we see that, that when, when the Lord talks to the seven churches, amen, and I, I even know that, that, that history may, may confirm that there are churches here, there are assemblies of people, amen, by no means does it mean that Jesus sanctioned a church building to be called a church, amen, we know that by his words, we know that, amen, by the scripture that his church, amen, was not made with hands, it is the temple, amen, we are the temple, he said he'll write his laws in our hearts and in our minds, praise God. So we are sure of that, praise God. Amen. And I want you to know that there, there are... There are warnings here, amen. But this hast thou, that they he hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, amen. And he said, him that hath an ear, amen, had him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches, amen. And he said, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and thou canst not bear them, verse 2, which are evil, amen. In this day, amen, in this, in this latter time when John, amen, after all the hoopla, and I don't mean any disrespect, by hoopla here, but after the acts, amen, and after John was sent to an isle of Patmos, after burning in oil, amen, a vat of oil, and, and is set there to, to live out his days, amen, praise God, he, amen, got the word of the Lord then and said, hey, I know your works, I know them that tried, and, and, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not. Amen. I want you to understand. I want the, I want the weight, amen, of the word of God to hit you this morning. Amen. I want you to understand that this is the last churches that were spoken to by Jesus himself, read letters of words in Jesus Christ's own words that he had given to John, amen. He said that you can't bear them that are evil. Who was he talking about, my friend? Who was he talking about? The Roman soldiers, amen. Was he talking about the scribes and Pharisees? No, those that were partakers, those that looked and played the role, having a form, my friend, of godliness, amen, but denying the power, the truth, amen, and lived in error to gain from their brothers, amen, in the Lord. And he said that thou hast found them liars. And he said, you, you, you born and you've had patience 
For my name's sake, you've labored and you have not fainted. Amen. And, and he said, you know what, what's happened here? And when we look in verse four, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. You have allowed them to leave me. What do you think Jesus is speaking here? You've allowed them same people that you found to be liars. They're not going by the scripture. You've allowed my love or your love for me to dwindle. You walked away from me. You are now following them instead of me. My friend, I don't know how much clearer scripture can be for us. Amen. We have got to stop following and swallowing this lie. He said, you think the devil's not going to come as an angel of light? You think that he's not going to appear to be uh, 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 godly? He is going to appear to be godly. He's going he's gonna to be a, a, a what did he say? A wolf in sheep's clothing. A wolf in sheep's clothing. He's going to clone himself as a sheep. He's going to come in among you. He's going to rise to the top. He's going to take control. My friend, we, we have got to be, be alert. Amen. We cannot be deceived. And, 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 and I, I want to go through some scripture here. I want to go through some of the some of the things that are common. Amen. Very common. That is being preached in the pulpits today of these so-called churches. And I love people that are that are trying to change their lives and are wanting and and, and all they know is that a church is somewhere they need to go to find God. And, and I don't discredit those people. I don't discredit you for that. I'm telling you this morning that, that my heart goes out. My compassion, amen, is with you. And, and if you seek God, he will bring you peace. Amen. He can bring you peace in places that don't even preach truth. But he's not validating those things, my friend. Amen. He's not validating those things. Amen. There are people that are finding Jesus in a bar. There are people that are coming. Amen. I, I found Jesus on the. On, <laughs> I found Jesus on, on, a, on a shed in an alley. You say, well, how'd you find Jesus there? I had just stabbed my father-in-law. Amen. I cut a main artery. The ambulance was on their way. Amen. I, I didn't know what to do. I just saw prison. Amen. I saw that I was just going to get uh, attempted murder, maybe. I don't know. And I wasn't wasn't trying to, to, to murder anyone. Amen. But I'm telling you what I saw and where I sought God. Amen. And I hid on a, on a, in the alley upon a thing so that the police wouldn't take me in. Amen. Man, I knew that I'd done something horribly wrong, amen. And I reached out and I cried out to God, amen. But I'm telling you right now, I don't go worship him on that shed, praise God. That's where I found Jesus that day. That's when I cried out to him. But I'll tell you today, I don't have to go back there to worship God. That may be the place that I found him, amen. That may be the place that I called out to him. But that's not the only place he is, praise Praise God. He's everywhere. He's in me. Praise God. The hope of glory. Praise God. And I'm telling you today, just because you may have been baptized in a, in a building somewhere and you may have heard a minister preach a message somewhere, that does not tie you, amen, to that place or that man. Praise God. You have got to convert to Jesus. You have got to maintain your walk with Jesus. Do not walk back away from Jesus and listen to man because that's where it happened, my friend. Amen. You come together. The Bible said where two or three are gathered together in my name, I will be there in the midst. Amen. And if two or three gathered together in a building, I'm telling you, it's not the building. It's not the church. It's not the man. 
Amen. It's nothing more than God honoring his word from what he told you he would do. He would be there. Praise God. And I'm telling you that we limit God so greatly. We have heard preached, and this is man's way to keep you going to a church, a building, and being a part of them and giving and being authority over you, my friend. That is not way, the way God intended this thing. Amen. God did not set it up that way, praise God. And I'm telling you, you you wanna you wanna you wanna check me, I'm telling you right now. You go to Matthew 20, 25 and 26, and you tell me what Jesus Jesus said there. You go to Luke 22, 25, and 26. Look it up yourself. Amen. Praise God. You tell me what Jesus said there. Amen. He told you, hey, we're not gonna, we're not gonna have authorities over one another. We're not gonna have offices. We're not gonna have it like the Gentiles. We're not gonna have it like like the like the the, the, the pharaohs and the and, 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 and the ways of the business world. We're not gonna have hierarchy in place. He said, This shall not be so among you. And you can quote all you want, apostle, have the rule over you and obey them and all this stuff you want. But I'm telling you, I'm not walking away from Jesus for no man, including any other man. The Bible said the words, Jesus said, my words will judge you in the last day. The apostle Paul warned us that we should not err, walk away from the gospel of Jesus Christ, not the apostles. There are whole churches that are set up based on the apostles' words because they take those words and they twist them, amen, and they use them out of context, amen, and they'll, they'll try and get you to walk after man, and they want you to be subject unto them. They want to create a business model. They want a hierarchy as in the old law. They want you to be, they want Moses' law to be pulled back into the grace line because you know what? This is where they deny the power, my friend. This is where they don't want you to follow after the Spirit, but they want you to check with them. So something that was preached just a few weeks back, amen, and I was told this, amen, and, 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 and they said, well, the, the, the preacher said, well, you know, um, if you get a word from the Lord, and I'm just talking like this because I'm being, being silly, if you get a word from the Lord, you've got to come to your pastor and he'll tell you if it's right or not. Now, I don't see that anywhere in the scripture, my friend. It's not in there. I can, I can assure you that. Amen. This is a false prophet. This is someone deceiving the people. Amen. And this same pastor had, had, had told people that, well, you've got to give 15% in tithes. Amen. He he went on about the oh you 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 give ten percent, but if you got anything left over, you should be given fifteen percent. And if you got anything left over, you need to pay tithes on that too. My Lord, my Lord. If we're not living in a in a scribe and a Pharisee moment and, and, and in a false teaching and preaching, Amen. And I'm telling you right now, this is this is what some call the truth churches. They're, they're, this, is, this is people who will teach salvation. Amen. They, they, they preach an Acts 2.38 message, my friend. But, but where else do you think Satan's going to come to deceive? Yeah. So I want to go through a few things here. When Jesus was healing leprosy, amen, and, and, and this same, same person had, had preached a message, said, well, this is, this is why you got to come to your pastor. He's, and, and, and Luke 5 and 14 said, go show yourself to the priest as Moses commanded under the law. He said, so, so there, now here, you, here you're looking at your conjecture and your extrapolation, my friend. Here's where the, the truth gets turned into a lie. This is where scripture is manipulated to fit man's motive. They use this scripture, this story about this person getting healed of leprosy and what they don't want to bring out, what they don't emphasize is that go show thyself to the priest as Moses commanded under the law. You see, they don't understand we're not under the law anymore. But they'll use that scripture to manipulate you into thinking you've got to do something. Oh, well, it's the word of God. 
Right there it is. I, I read it to you. It's the word of God. You, you be stupid enough to suck it down and swallow it and, 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 and not worry about the grace of Jesus Christ in your life. I'm going to bring you back from the grace line and your freedom that Jesus gave you. And I'm going to put you, bind you back under the law of man. My friend, this is deception. You should run from that. You should rebuke those things. You should say, hey, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not into all that. I don't know where you got that from, but I got an idea. But that's under the law, and I don't live under the law anymore, and neither do you, and you should stop preaching that kind of garbage. Amen. I'm telling you this morning, people, conjecture and manipulation, extrapolation, they'll make it, amen, to mean what they want it to mean, praise God, for their own benefit, for their own glory. And Jesus said, there's no flesh going to glory in my presence. Amen. They love to be seen in the high seats of people. They love to be seen, praise God, the scribes and Pharisees. Amen. The date preachers and the pastors of our day. Oh, they love it when they can go and lift each other up. They love it on social media when they can say, oh, you got to listen to this man. This man is great. Oh, he's so great. He's so great. My friend, I'm telling you right now, you need to, you need to leave those things. Amen. Praise God, Malachi 3 and 8 and 9, and I'm telling you right now, on the tithe issue, amen, again, the old law was done away with, praise God. You, if you don't understand that, you don't believe it, you need to read Hebrews 10, praise God. Amen, you need to read a lot more than that, but I'll tell you right now, lo, amen, he taketh away the first to establish the second. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, is not going to share his glory with Moses. Malachi, so much talked about, brought over from the Old Testament across the grace line. Will a man rob God, they say? Well, you got to give tithes and offerings. You're subject to the law. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not under the law anymore. I'm under the grace of Jesus Christ. Why would you be spewing that hate and deception? I'm no longer under the law. It was Jesus that made me free. Read my Bible. Read your Bible, praise God. You're not understanding. You're trying to use tithes and offerings on me to, to coerce me and extort me for man's gain, for your organizational purposes. So you can get some feather in your cap that you donated more than anyone else in your region. My friend, this is sin. This is deception. And he talked, well, you know, the Lord will pour out a blessing from the heavens. Now, first of all, this was, this was talking to the, to the uh, old law and to a specific people. Not you and I today. You'll not find one place in the New Testament where anyone offered tithes. You talk to G you'll talk about Jesus. You'll read about Jesus talking to the scribes and Pharisees under the old law. But that's where it is, under the law. Amen. And it wasn't for everyone. Do your studies. Again, study to show thyself approved unto God. Don't come and oh, quote me stupid scripture. It's stupid because you're taking it so far out of context that it don't mean anything today. It's not for us. It was crops. And you know what was going to come out of blessing from heaven? It was rain. Rain for their crops. How stupid do they think we are when they want to bring that garbage into the church of today? I'll tell you what. They don't want you reading your Bible. These, 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 these false teachers and false preachers and pastors that are trying to, to build their little kingdoms, and many of them have huge kingdoms because of this, and, and they'll, they'll have their pro false prophet area. You've seen that. We read it in Revelation 20, praise God, that when they're deceiving people, praise God. And, and, and as he said here, just in this scripture, go show thyself to the priest as Moses commanded under the law. Oh, I bet that wasn't emphasized, was it? Let's go on. Back, back to Malachi. It was, it was grains. 
and, and the barns were in the storehouse. It was food. It had nothing to do with the New Testament of Jesus Christ. Never recorded or even talked about or practiced in the New Covenant Church. You'll not find it, my friend. They'll not find it either, praise God. They're adding to and taking away from the Word of God. And you know what that means? Curse. Amen. Praise God. Matthew 23 and 23, Jesus speaking to Pharaohs or the Pharisees uh, about tithes. And, and this, is, this is one of them they use too. Oh, well, Jesus said, oh, well, you, you and, and notice it was not money. It was herbs, oil, and spices. And, and, and the bigger point, what Jesus was making is, is that he was speaking about what they were doing, not approving it. So when you when you talk to somebody, when you when you make relations to something, it it's, doesn't mean that you brought that relation to to because you approved it and you spoke of what they're doing. It doesn't mean that you you oh Jesus said it. Of course he said it. He was recalling them to to the to the sin that they were committing. And so the bigger point, he was speaking about what they were doing, not approving it. He was making a point of their neglect of compassion, faith, and judgment. Read this scripture for yourself. He said, these ye ought to have done because that's what you are, you are doing. And not let the others undone. And, 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 and keep in mind, even if I'm wrong on this part of it, it's still under the law. Until Jesus died and, and rose again, the law was still in effect. And that's all done away with. It's scripture. It's done away with. Jesus said it was finished. That's exactly what he was talking about. But, but this they say, Jesus said they were to do this. Now, now when you go to Mark 7 and 7, Jesus invalidated their whole teaching. Because they were mixing it with the, their own traditions. And he said even their worship to God was meaningless. That's what Jesus said in Mark 7 and 7. Read that too. And they, they want to say, oh, well, they were, they were doing right in this. Jesus said they, they were just all messed up. So you, you want to base, you want to base a solid foundation of tithing off of what Jesus said was hypocrites. But they're going to bring that small little piece of scripture to, to promote a whole doctrine about tithes. You understand the manipulation here. You understand about the extrapolation that we're talking about today. The deception. Amen. That's how they're doing it. Praise God. Amen. That's how it's done. And, and, and they're making these things, teaching you things that are wrong. Yet pastors and organizations will teach the same logic the very ones Jesus invalidated and claimed they were blind guides. If they're blind guides, you're going to say, oh, well, well, they were right in this. Jesus said they were right. He was talking about what they were talking about, what they actually were doing. Well, while you were robbing the bank, you did X, L, I, Z. And, and just because I said, well, they're robbing a the bank, I, I approved them robbing a the bank, right? Now, that's how stupid some of this stuff is if you think about it and you look at Scripture. When you know Jesus, you have a guide, my friend. You know what Jesus would and wouldn't do. When Jesus says, I come to be as your servant, you know that his disciples aren't going to act like your boss. That's pretty simple because he said, except you follow me, Except you pick up your cross and follow me, you're not going to make it to heaven. And if he didn't do it, you're not to do it. I'm telling you, some of the things are just simple, but people are manipulating you. They're manipulating what you're thinking. They're using bits and pieces of the, of the word of God to deceive you. That's why we read all those scriptures. We, we, we talked about them. And there are so many, many, many more. 
I'll tell you another one here that that is that is that is a, a, a big farce. Hebrews ten and twenty five, and boy, you'll you'll hear this piped out. Oh, you got to go to church, or you're going to hell. Really? I got to be physically in church. I got to come under your pastor or a pastor because oh, somebody I got to have a covering. That I, I didn't even have this in right now, but the, the covering thing. That's a lie from hell. Man wants to be your covering. You you gonna you gonna stand in judgment for me, sir? You 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 gonna give account for all the deeds that I do? Are you willing to stand before God with that? Are you serious? You're my covering. Well, that's another lie from hell. Knows the propagated. They're gonna they're gonna deal with the false prophets. Deal in in chap, chapter twenty. Of revelation that we just read there's a hell of fire and brimstone there's a lake of fire that those folks are going to reside in don't be one of them repent change move away from that false teaching you're no one's covering there's only one covering that's the blood of jesus christ my friend don't that that should that should spark right out the bat right off the out the gate you should say, oh, what? <laughs> wait, Jesus said he was my covering. You, uh, wait, they're, they're saying a man's my covering? Oh, he's going to be my covering? He's going to be our church's covering? My Lord, come on, wake up, wake up. And Hebrews 10 and 25, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as a manner of some such is, amen, but, but more so in the, in, in the last days. And this is, this is one of those big things that they, they like to use, amen. And, and, and if they, they, they read Hebrews 10, I, that's one of the lesser things that the Bible's talking about in there. That, that's just a blip saying, hey, you know, remember to get together. That, that's what that's saying. When you read Hebrews 10, stop, stop. They're, make, they're making it like this whole, this whole passage is about, oh, you got to go to church. Are you kidding me? Why don't you read the whole, whole chapter? What's the main theme of the whole chapter? It's about not being under the law. It's, it's about, <laughs> it's not about just forsaking yourself of assembly. And nowhere in there it says a building or a church. And, and you, you'll find nowhere where, where the Bible's talking about a, a sinner bringing someone to Jesus to a church. If you find it, message me, please, because it's not there. I've read that New Testament over and over and over again. Amen. I'm not all knowing, but I know that's not in there. Praise God. Yet because it benefits the man-made church, they'll preach it this way. They'll extrapolate it. They'll conjecture with this, with both money and control. It's skewed to mean coming to a church building. Does it benefit when we collectively come together and worship God, as we talked about earlier, where two or more are gathered together? Yes, it does. We'll feel the Spirit of God. It's not because you're in that church building, though. They play on this. They use the, 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 the statutes and, and, and the oracles of God to, to manipulate, my friend. Do you understand? God is going to confirm his promises if he said he'll do something he's going to do it they just try to change a situation and throw you off of why god's doing it oh it's because you come to this church oh i feel the lord when i go to that church. you know why you're feeling the lord when you go to that church because there's two or more gathered together in his name it's not because of the place my friend it's not because of the preacher it's because there's two or three believers in there that are reaching god my Lord, we got to get smart to this. We've got to understand the word. Of course it benefits when we come collective to the Lord. Amen. But does that mean God's approving the church house meeting or, or the actual assembly? It's where two or more are gathered in his name. Amen. Amen. This is where folks are deceived because man uses these things by the satanic way to capitalize on God's word for their own gain. 
See, the devil knows what's in the heart of man. The Bible said the heart is desperately wicked and who could know it? And the devil capitalizes on that. That spirit drives man and he plays on that. And, 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 and it'll make man manipulate scripture. He'll use them. Again, we look back to Revelation 2 here. You say, well, how's that happen? How does that happen? I mean, the pastor seems like he's good. He does this and that. Um, you know, and I'm not, I'm not trying to down any man, okay? Some, some may be doing it ignorantly. But if they're doing it, amen, uh, uh, willingly, and if after they hear this message, they don't search their self and change, my friend, they're doing it willingly. And when you're doing something willingly, it, it is sin to you. Amen. If you're hearing this and you don't you don't examine yourself, my friend, you are subject to sin willfully. Amen. So what I'm telling you here, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them liars. My friend. It's happening. You just have to make sure it's not happening in, to you or on your watch. Now the big question here while we're in chapter 10, are you being taught the new and living way in verse 20? You know, they want to, they want to, oh, don't, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Oh, no, as a manner of some such is. The Lord said you got to be in church. Don't you forsake the assembling. God said it right there. Oh, really? Well, well pastor, what, what about verse 20, the, the new and living way? What's that talking about? How, how, how we no longer answer to man in a priesthood. Or verse 11 and 14, that, that Jesus made the final offering for us to, to be perfected and, and how the altar, why do we have an altar again? Um, be, because Jesus said he was, the, he was the perfect and final sacrifice. We, we no longer needed a sacrifice. It was him that, that was done once and for all. So what, why do we need an altar? Because he was my sacrifice. He is my sacrifice ever before God in the face of Jesus Christ by that name. Acts 4 and 12, neither is there salvation in any other. There's nothing more I can do. He went to that altar. He laid his body. He tore down that middle wall partition. He is my middle man before God. Amen. He is ever before in grace, praise God. Amen. The law came by Moses, but truth and grace came by Jesus Christ. Why, why do we have this? Somebody needs to start asking some questions here. Let's get the churches, if there's going to be any, back to Bible. Because all ye are brethren, Jesus said. There's no big eyes or little U's. And I don't care how many times they want to say, well, I'm your servant, but they're not playing the servant, my friend. It's not happening. See, you can't go back to the old law. You have left the faith, my friend. It's simple as that. The letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. And if you're following after the spirit, they have no control over you. And if you got to go to them, you're going back to the priesthood of the old law. So I, I want to encourage you today. I, I'm, I'm not trying to, trying to throw water on your fire for Jesus. You, you love Jesus. You keep loving Jesus. Amen. But I'm telling you, we, we, we can't swallow these, these false, false scriptures. Uh, the way they want to conjecture and uh, extrapolate uh, the, the, the word of God anymore. We, we've got to be off with that. We, we can't do that anymore. We, we have got to get smart about that. Praise God. Second Thessalonians 2 and 10. I want to go there. And it says, and with all deceivableness, of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. 
And, and, and I, I'm just telling you folks, I, I love you. I, I want you to, to know God. I, I, I want things to, to work for you. And as Jesus said, as Jesus said here, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. And, and, and here, here is some uh, scriptures I'll, I'll leave with you today. Amen. And you can take a picture of these and go look them up and, and, and read. But, but I'm telling you, my friend, we, we've got to get smart about this thing. Our, our lives depend on it. I will tell you that this morning. Your life depends on it. And God, we just pray today, this morning, that your word would not go out void and that, God, it would do exactly what it was set out to do. To those that believe, God, we know, God, that, that, that you're going to move and you're going to work in their life. And, God, that they'll, they'll start looking at your word, God. And, Lord, we repent, God, if we have followed man, God. And we, we asked you for forgiveness, God. Bring us back to your glory, that your joy might remain in us, God, and that it may be full. God, not, not hindered by man and, 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 and the, uh, the scribes and Pharisee spirits, God, that would, would come on us, God. Lord, we love you and we want you, God. We want that personal walk. We want that personal guidance with you, God. And we just pray, God, this, this day that, that you would just help us, be with us, and walk with us and guide us into all truth and righteousness. And we praise you for it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Praise God. Amen.